All right, next up in our Index DB series, we're going to be talking about how to use add, put, and delete. So basically, how to insert records, which we've already talked about a little bit, but we're going to recap that. Then we're going to talk about how to do an update with put and how to remove records from our store as well. So starting with the code that we had from the previous video, number three in the series, if you're looking for the link to the playlist, it's down in the description, as well as the finished code from this video. There's a link to that as well in the description. So right now, what we're doing is we're listening for a submit of the form. And here's the form right here. There's four buttons inside of it. So clicking any one of those is going to trigger a submit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to say, if you click on the add button, we're going to do the previous code that we had, which was the add method. Update is going to do the put. Delete is going to do the delete. Reset, that one we've already got handled. That one's doing the clearing of the form. So we need to make a modification. Here's the code right here. We're saying, listen for the submit event on the whiskey form. So we're just going to change this to be on the button add. So we're going to replace that for button add, and it's going to be click instead of submit. And now we're going to be processing the ad. So what we're going to do is we're going to get all the data from the form. We're building the whiskey object. We start our transaction like we always do. It's going to be read write because we have to be able to write into the store. We're targeting the store and we're calling add. We're just passing in the new object. We've already defined in here, in our whiskey DB, in our whiskey store, we've defined the key path as ID. So whatever value we give to the property ID, that's going to be the value that we have here. Okay, so this is the, the insert, the creating of a new record. But one thing to take note of, in here, the ID, I'm generating a unique ID for each one of these. If I were to take one of these values, so let's take a look, what's this last one? So this is the Jack Daniels. If I was to take this value right here and I copy that, so when we click on Jack Daniels, it loads it into the form. If I don't generate a new ID, if I were to pass in the same ID as the other Jack Daniels. So I save that. We're refreshing our page to make sure we get the latest script and everything. Click on this. I've loaded this. When I click the add button, it says data may be stale. So we've got here, there's two Jack Daniels objects right here. If I do it again, we get this error. Now, what it did was it actually made a modification the first time we do this. So if you do make it a second time, if you use the same ID a second time, it's going to modify the ID or it can modify the ID. If I do it again with the same data, I'm actually getting an error that's taking place. So if I jump over. Here it is. This is the event inside the error handler. So this one is right here. Error and request to add. And then line 133, this is the transaction error handler right here. The error object for the transaction. So it's saying there was an error in the ad that bubbled up, came to the transaction. And if we look inside of here, the target, we'll see that it's actually a DOM exception. The key already exists in the object store. So we're going to get that error if we try using the same ID multiple times. Okay, so we want to avoid that. Just something to be aware of. You can get that error if you're trying to use the same ID again. And that's why we want to generate the user ID ourselves when we're doing the ad. Okay, so that's ad for doing update. We're going to be doing very much the same thing here. So the other two buttons I have, there's the update button and the delete button. Those are the IDs from the HTML. Inside the update, we're going to be doing the same thing as we do for the ad. 
So let's copy this. And with this copied, we're going to put it in two places. We're going to put it inside the delete and sorry, not both places, just inside the update. Inside the delete, we don't need all this information. We only need the ID. The update, we need the ID as well as all this information because we're going to provide new values for everything. And if I leave any of these off when I'm doing the update, they're not going to be there. It's like I'm deleting those properties from the object. When we do an update, we're replacing the old object with the new one that we're creating. So we have to make sure that we get all these values in there as well. For both, we're going to do EV prevent default because we don't want the form to submit and reload the page. So that's going to be inside of both EV prevent default. The ID is going to come from the form itself. If we jump over to the elements and we take a look at the form right now, there's nothing inside the form tag. But if I click on one of these, this is what we did in the previous video. When we clicked on a list item, we took the data key there and we put it up inside the form. That way, if I'm doing an update or a delete, I have the ID of the item that I want to remove. So here we've got everything written as well as that in the form tag, we have this. So we have access to that anytime we're doing an update or delete. So let's get that key. We'll say let key equal, and then it's whiskey form, get attribute, data key. I'm going to use that for both of these. Now, if the key does not exist, we don't need to do anything. We're not doing an update. We're not doing a delete. We're only going to do the operation if we do have that actual number. Okay. So we have the data for the update. We've got the key for the update, the ID. For the delete, we've got the key. And now inside of both the update and the delete, we're doing pretty much what we did for the add. We're going to create a transaction. We're going to access the store. We're going to call an operation. So this is going to change right here, but the rest of this stuff is going to be pretty much the same. So let's come back up here inside of key. I can paste that. So this is the delete function. And instead of add, it's going to be delete. And this is going to be requesting a delete. Successfully deleted an object and request to delete. Because we don't want to have an error occur if we don't have that ID. So we're avoiding an error. Okay, so application, what's this last one? That's the Jack Daniels. So let's try that. We click on that one, fills it in. The form will have it inside of that data key attribute. We click, click delete. Oh, whiskey's not defined. Yes, that's one other change we have to make right here. So when we call the delete, we're not passing in an object. That is something that's different from the update and the add. We need to pass in this key. It's just the ID that we have to pass in. So the key path, whatever that value is right here, one of these values, that's what we pass in to do a delete. Okay, so there's Jack Daniels again. We'll click on it and delete. Okay, no error, but data may be stale. So let's refresh. Sure enough, it's gone from the list. The last one's the lag of Ulan 8. And it is gone from our list here. Because we are doing the build list every time we successfully finish doing our delete. And the clear form, we're doing that as well. So we've cleared out all this information. Let's take a look inside there. Here's our form. Sure enough, it's gone. If I click on the leg of Ulan 8, there's the key. And if I reset the form, it's gone from there. So I don't have to worry about accidentally updating or deleting it in the future because that's been removed by our clear form function. Okay, the update. Almost the same thing as we do here. We're going to copy all this stuff over. 
actually two parts. So we'll copy this first up into the update. Oh, we have it already. And then we've got the key. Great. Inside the key, or after the if statement for the key, we're going to create our whiskey object. Here, I'll minimize this one. Inside here, there's our new whiskey object, and we're no longer using the generation of the ID. We're taking the one that's coming out of the form. After we've done that, now we're doing pretty much what we did for the ad. We're going to create a transaction. We're going to access the store. We're going to call put instead of add, and then we will have a success and an error. Same as before. Come back up here. So inside the update, after we've checked for the existence of the key, we create our transaction. We're going to clear form. We're going to build list again after we do an update, just in case we change a name. And this becomes a put. And there we go. That's it. That's all it took. So now we should be able to do updates and deletes. So let's click on the Crown Royal 3. And let's say it's a 32-year-old. And I don't own it. And we'll update it down here, Crown Royal 32. So it was changed here, which means here it should be updated as well. There we go, Crown Royal, the age 32. So this has been updated. And if I wanted to delete the, oh, it did not clear it out. After we did our update, Or did I click on it again? Let's double check that. So Crown Royal 32, I clicked on it. And let's make this a 22 owned update refresh. 22, there it is. So that's been updated. This has been cleared out. And in the form, just to be sure, yes, it is gone. The data attribute has been removed. And there we go. That's it. That is add, update, and delete. So add is for inserting. Make sure you don't duplicate the key because you will get an error for that. Delete provides a key, not an object. Make sure that you're passing in the actual key and that the um, not the object if you want it to delete. And for update, you will get an error if you're trying to do one that doesn't exist. All right, so that's it. Um, Hope that makes you feel comfortable with doing the inserts, the updates, and deletes. Uh, if you have any questions, leave those in the comments. I'll answer as many as I have time for. Don't forget to uh, watch out tomorrow for the uh, next installment in this series. And as always, thanks for watching.